Policymakers and industry players converge on Abuja to chart new technological path for Nigeria's petroleum industry. Global oil prices remain bearish as OPEC plans to deepen production cuts. China boosts fight against coronavirus with $43 billion as Tom Sierra batters UK businesses. This is Business Express reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. And I am Benny Adams, your guide. The authority of ECOWAS heads of state and government has constituted a committee headed by President Rochma Christian Kabori of Burkina Faso to study and make a full report on Nigeria's land border closure with her neighbors. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports that the decision to set up the committee was agreed on Sunday night in Addis Ababa. Ethiopia at an extraordinary session of ECOWAS leaders convened on the margins of the 33rd African Union Summit to discuss the issue and other pressing regional matters. It was an intensive deliberation by the ECOWAS leaders on the closure of Nigeria's land borders, which the government blamed on security concerns, economic sabotage, as well as illicit drugs and human trafficking. The extraordinary session presided over by ECOWAS chairman and president of Niger, Muhammadu Izufu, analyzed the resultant consequences of the action on the welfare and well-being of the country's neighbors. ECOWAS has um, appointed um, one of the presidents uh, to go and um, undertake uh, a study uh, and um, you know, discuss with all the um, protagonists, all the um, states concerned and actors concerned and then come back as quickly as possible with a report and uh, which will then be uh, studied and um, then um, you know, actions hopefully uh, will be taken as a result of that. Why do you think Nigeria is not in a hurry to reopen our land borders? Um, well, because there was a mischief. Um, there was a reason why the borders were closed. And, um, and obviously, uh, those, um, you know, um, causes uh, have not been um, satisfactorily addressed. Um, as you know what the causes were, uh, there's the illegal importation of um, huge quantities of uh, rice, uh, which threatens our food security. And um, there's also the issue of um, illegal smuggling of um, small arms and light weapons. And there's also the illegal smuggling of drugs. And all of those are having a huge and uh, deleterious effect uh, on our society. The meeting held behind closed doors also discussed the political impasse in Guinea -Bissau as well as the ECOWAS single currency initiative. The ECOWAS was informed uh, by the um, head of the government uh, of Guinea-Bissau that um, the Supreme Court decision uh, is imminent uh, today, possibly it might uh, come out, and that it's better to, to wait uh, before taking any further decisions. On the single currency, I mean, the situation is uh, just... Uh, the same, uh, that the, um, the countries that are not part of the uh, CFA uh, uh, zone, um, you know, feel that the convergence criteria um, for a single currency have not been met and that um, it's not uh, appropriate uh, to rush into a single uh, market when all the economic uh, uh, indices um, still need to be met. No debt has yet been fixed 
for the resumption of talks by the ECOWAS leaders on the contentious issues affecting the sub-region. The annual Nigeria International Petroleum Summit is a meeting place for the oil and gas industry and the focus this year is technology, knowledge, sustainability and the partnership to enhance investments as well as improve success rates of indigenous business engagement. Lydia Sampson had earlier given an update on the opening. Thank you, studio. The first and second editions of NIFS held in 2018 and 2019, respectively, was applauded as attracting high-level attendance from across the continent and beyond. NIFS 2020 will consolidate on successes recorded, as well as focus on technology, knowledge, sustainability, and partnership to enhance inflow of foreign investment, as well as improving success rates of indigenous business engagement. Of course, the usual networking for key political players, industry specialists, and leaders in the private sector on the sideline will hold. It's back to you in the studios. Moving on, the energy features decline in the global market while precious metals rise. In the past two weeks, cocoa and ginger prices moved upwards in the local exchange as a result of sustained demand in the international market. However, other crops are in ample supply. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has injected $218.41 million into the interbank retail secondary market intervention sales. The dollar-denominated intervention, which is meant for only agricultural and raw material sectors, is in continuation of its intervention in the interbank foreign exchange market. Director of Corporate Communications of the CBN, Isaac Okorafo said the exercise, just like in previous times, was for the payment of renminbi-denominated letters of credit for agriculture as well as raw materials. Okorafo explained that the stability of the foreign exchange was largely due to the sustained interventions by the bank. He further assured that the CBN management would remain committed to ensuring that all the sectors of the forex market continue to enjoy access to the needed foreign exchange, stressing that the stability in the foreign exchange market continued to attract investors. On that note, let's see how the Naira is faring alongside other major currencies. the currency market, Musa Abubakar in Sokoto has been sampling ways Nigeria can boost her foreign exchange. It's hard to identify goods that are made in Nigeria in this shop except farm produce. The majority of goods in this market are imported 
This means Naira is used to exchange for dollars in order to pay for these goods. At between 350 to 360 Naira to a dollar, the Naira is weak and the economy vulnerable. The country's appetite for imported goods, with crude oil as the major source of foreign exchange, leaves a lot to be desired. This reflects the imbalance in trade and a huge pressure on the available foreign exchange. What do we produce in this country? Do we have productive capacity that will give us the sufficient foreign exchange we require to do transactions internationally? That is what gives other countries of the world upper hand over Nigeria. We still have our currency depreciating. Solution to this predicament, experts say, points out one direction, cutting down imports and boosting exports as well as strengthening border security. The need for Nigeria to diversify is one of the objectives of the economy. And in as much as we remain as we are, the diversification is not realized, then we remain constrained by the amount of revenue we generated. The import ban lease and Chinese currency exchange may have curbed the demand for dollar, but promoting indigenous manufacturing capacity to substitute imported goods stands out as the most suitable option to fetch more foreign exchange earnings for the country. The federal government set to give Zafara state priority in the distribution of incentives and support to boost agricultural activities in the state. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mahmoud Sabo Nanunu, assures the state government officials and traditional rulers in Zafara that the state will be carried along in the agricultural mechanization of the federal government. Musa Babaliu reports. The federal government will be executing $1.1 billion agricultural intervention program. The program is designed to assist smallholder farmers have access to heavy-duty equipment to boost agricultural activities. The government will acquire and distribute 10,000 units of tractors and 50,000 units of assorted implement. 5.1 million farmers and young Nigerians are expected to benefit from the project directly and indirectly. To this end, Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mahmoud Sabanonunu, says Zamfara State and other states whose farming activities were disrupted due to banditry will be given priority in the mechanization initiative. And this massive agricultural mechanization will touch on 632 local governments. Not only that, attached to this there will be processing centers, about 140 of them across the country. I believe all the local government in Gosau are going to be affected by the new uh, innovation. As the state government welcomed what the federal government offered on the table, another request came before the minister. The request is for the state to be permitted to join the $200 million World Bank Agricultural Support Program. In the northwest uh, geopolitical zone, uh, where three states are supposed to benefit, but it's only one state that remains now. So we appeal to you to consider them for state. Both the minister and the state government seek traditional rulers' support. Skills acquisition has been highlighted as key to solving the problem of unemployment occasioned by unskilled workforce. This resonated at a graduation ceremony of about 11,000 persons trained on different vocations and skills nationwide by the Industrial Training Fund, ITF, through its National Industrial Skills Development Program. Given the intensity and the very practical nature of the training, which was 80% practical and 20% theory, they were equipped with the necessary skills and attitudes for them to thrive as employees or as entrepreneurs. And I want to use this opportunity to urge all well-meaning institutions and relevant agencies, both private and public, to please support and encourage the institution. The National Industrial Skill Development Program, there's no doubt, provides the needed skills required for the national development. 
Four insurance companies are finalizing arrangements to raise about 20 billion naira in new equity funds from existing and new investors as insurers step up efforts to meet new minimum capital requirements and strengthen their positions ahead of expected industry consolidation. The companies are mostly sourcing for the new capital from existing shareholders, a traditional method for most companies in recent time. Authorities at the Nigerian Stock Exchange at the weekend indicated they have approved the new capital raising by Prestige Assurance and Consolidated Hallmark Insurance. The Department for International Development, DFID, Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, and the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, have agreed to collaborate to develop the fintech space in Nigeria. Receiving officials of both organizations in Abuja, Acting Director General of SEC, Mary Uduk, said the collaboration as it would encourage responsible use of new technologies and digital finance in the capital market, influence increased international participation, cooperation, and provide investors with more choices in the Nigerian capital market. She said the SEC is looking to adopt regulatory and supervisory practices for elderly development and stability of fintech in the market. Despite improved numbers in 2019, full year results churned out by quoted companies, sentiments failed to improve in the equities markets. Let's join Muplang Dakok for that weekly overview. The Nigerian stock market witnessed a steep decline in the week ended 7th February 2020, as the NSU All Share Index lost 2.69%, while market capitalization lost 239 billion naira to close at 14.62 trillion naira. The market recorded total turnover of 1.4 billion shares worth 20.2 billion naira in 23,263 deals. The financial services industry led the activity chart with 1.1 billion shares valued at 13.7 billion naira traded in 15,183 deals. The consumer goods industry followed with 68.2 million shares and the conglomerates industry occupied the third place. Trading in the top three equities, Zenit Bank, FBN Holdings and Guarantee Trust Bank accounted for 621.1 million shares worth 11.2 billion naira in 6,718 deals. All other indices finished lower with the exception of the NSC Insurance Index, which appreciated by 0.23%, while the NSC SM Index closed flat. 15 equities appreciated in price during the week, 49 equities depreciated in price, while 99 equities remained unchanged. At the close of business this Monday, the All Share Index dipped 1.05% to close at 27,772.19 basis points with market capitalization at 14.4 trillion naira, 200.1 million shares valued at 1.9 billion naira in 3,487 deals traded at the end of the session. Boasment topped the gainers, Nestle led the decliners, while FBNH, Transcap and Zenith Bank were the most sought after stocks at the end of the day's transactions. Coronavirus and Storm Sierra are plummeting major stocks around the globe as uncertainties persist. Bossidi Ebel is our guide. Coronavirus epidemic continues to hit hard on global markets. It was reported that the death toll from the outbreak had now reached 908 in mainland China, with 97 fatalities as reported on Sunday. China released its January inflation data on Monday, with its producer price index up 0.1% and consumer prices rising 5.4% year on year. Consumer prices rose at their fastest pace since October 2011. 
Asian stocks declined on Monday as investors monitored the economic impact of the virus. Nikkei dropped 0.6%, Shanghai Composite 0.51%, and the Hansang Index 0.59%. U.S. stock index futures were lower as investors accessed the impact of the coronavirus outbreak in China. Dow Jones Industrial Average depreciated by 0.94%. The S&P 500, 0.54%, and the Nasdaq Composite, 0.54% as well. European markets traded lower amid ongoing concerns around the coronavirus outbreak. Africa's stocks were also affected. South Africa's GSE Africa Top 40, Ghana's GSE Composite, Namibia's Overall Index, and Nairobi's All Share depreciated, while Tunisia's Tunidex rose 0.4 percent. China's central bank say it will offer a 300 billion yuan equivalent to 43 billion dollars boost this week to help businesses involved in fighting the virus epidemic, which has swept China and infected thousands. The outbreak, which started in the central city of Wuhan, has brought large swaths of the country to a halt and threatens to dampen the country's already slowing economy. The People's Bank of China said it will offer the first tranche of special relending funds on Monday, which it said will support financial institutions to give loans to key enterprises involved in the prevention and control of the epidemic. As the working week begins, the travel chaos caused by Storm Sierra will persist as railway staff clear lines of everything from trampolines to trees and airlines struggle to get their planes, pilots and passengers where they need to be. Travelers using Heathrow Airport were was affected on Sunday. Airlines had been told to trim their schedules and had proactively cancelled around 200 flights but conditions on the day were so bad that almost 300 more flights were grounded. Many had very little notice. That is it on this edition of Business Express. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter and the handle is at NTA News Now. The hashtag is hashbizx. Business Express returns on Wednesday. I am Benny Adams saying keep thinking and doing business.